Hi, my name is Jessica Bakke, and today I'll be walking through you through our EasyBib School Edition. We created School Edition to complement the research skills that you're teaching in the library. School Edition is built around helping students understand the research process and information literacy. Founded 10 years ago, EasyBib is so intuitive that it, be, that it has become the most popular online citation and research management tool. Last year, over 37 million students used us to accurately create their bibliographies and effectively manage their research. For many students, EasyBib has become part of the natural research workflow. We can customize School Edition with your school's logo and links to other library resources. One of the most helpful aspects we find is that if a student is working on their project and realizes there's a gap, they can easily search the other resources that you have to offer. I'm going to go ahead and get into our bibliography now. And this is where we will add our citations. We do offer 59 options in total. Pretty much anything you want to cite on EasyBib, you can. We offer everything from an advertisement to a lecture or a television show, all available for students to cite. I'm going to go ahead and start with a website, though. We do offer a few educational tools embedded into our citation form, and the website just kind of showcases those. We can go ahead and copy and paste the URL right into where it says enter web address and click auto cite. What EasyBib does is it scrapes the metadata from the URL. We do recommend that students go back and double check to make sure that everything in the citation form lines up with whatever source they're citing. But overall, really great place to start if they are going to cite a website. On the right hand side, this is another very helpful tool. It's what we call our Learn Site. So this just shows students how the citation is going to be formatted. We show them how different data elements are formatted and then place it in the citation. And if the student needs to brush up on anything from where to find the publisher or sponsor, or what the URL rules are for MLA 7. All that information is available in the Learn Site box as well. And if we scroll up, another very helpful tool is our website evaluation. So libraries are using EasyBib as an effective way to teach important information literacy skills and promote ethical research. In the world of too much information, Understanding the principles of crediting information is a must-have, and our intuitive citation tools encourage students to cite and evaluate as they research, properly crediting reliable sources, avoiding plagiarism, and following the academic code. With our website evaluation, we took the top 5,000 websites that were cited on EasyBib and created a set of criteria that judges whether or not the website's credible. The student can see the level of credibility and then click on Learn More, which brings them through the different criteria sets, questions and answers that we went through to determine the credibility. Everything from who the author is to publisher of a site or currency of the site. Really, those different data elements students should really be hitting and looking at when they're doing their research. We also offer a visual guide where students are able to see where different data elements might be for the different types of websites that they might be citing. So really trying to help students understand information literacy and their research. There are techniques and skills that students can learn and with the website evaluation we're just trying to help them understand that process of knowing where to look, what to look for, and how to use it. We can go ahead and close this and if we scroll down we can click Create Citation, and the citation generates for us very quick, very simple, and very effective. Another feature of our bibliography is the ability to invite others to view, edit, or comment on the bibliography that we're working on. The student would share this with peers or instructors. And once they do that, Students are able to work in a group setting or any type of peer review, but instructors can also check on the progress that the student is making and offer helpful suggestions 
where to find, you know, maybe try out this database or great source, anything they feel the student could benefit from. The last part that I want to show in our bibliography is our analyze feature. We break down the student's bibliography based on a number of different criteria sets. We look at their diversity of source types, database usage, website credibility, and the number of sources in their paper. Other pieces of information that might be relevant and important, the years those sources were published, the dates that they cited those sources, and the annotations that they have. Really trying to help students understand that it's not just that you cite your sources, it's important to pay attention to what you're citing and how you're citing and take ownership of the research that you're doing. We also offer explanations as to why each of these are important and what the student can do to improve on that. So that's all I'm going to show in the bibliography section. Why don't we go ahead and get into our note taking feature. Our notebook was created to provide a flexible framework, really allowing, a stu really allowing students to cultivate a habit and mindset on how to organize their information. There's a couple of ways to get started. We can either click on New Note, or we can double click in the Notes space. We're going to offer a place for a title. Students can associate the note with one of the sources in their bibliography. And there's also spots for quotes, paraphrases, and comments. Having the three separate boxes for those different, uh, those different pieces of information partnered with the Source Association really kind of forces the student to think more critically about that research that they're doing and make sure that they are crediting the sources that they plan on using in their paper. We also offer an organization feature where students can group, tag, or color code their notes. Once you're done, you save your note. And once the note's created, this is a completely dynamic space for students to work in. They're able to drag the note wherever makes the most sense for them. We also offer a bird's eye view over here on the bottom right hand corner where students can see the flow and organization that their notes are taking. And it also is a navigation bar. So if the student is doing a larger research project, they're really given the opportunity to branch out with that. You can group your notes, place one on top of the other, letting students start developing main ideas. And we also offer color coding. So you would choose your note, click on Organize, and choose whatever color you'd want it to be. In addition to our Visualize view, we also offer a list view, basically breaking down your notes in different organizational groups. You can look at your notes by group, by tag, by source, or the date that you created it. So pretty much any way the student needs to organize himself, he's given the opportunity to do so. The last part is our outline over here on the right hand side. We can enter our thesis by double clicking, create and move bullets using the outlining toolbar, or again you can double click and drag and drop. But what's most helpful is that you can actually take the notes you've created and drag and drop them into your outline. These drag notes are denoted by note symbols, and you'll notice if we were to click on print, oops, print. <laughs> All the information that's in the note card is available in the printout of the outline. So if the student is using this to write his paper, he has a fantastic understanding of everything he plans on putting into a particular spot, making the paper writing process so much more manageable and less intimidating once they do finally get to that point. The last part of the notebook that I want to point out is the notebook read-only sharing. Teachers and peers are given the opportunity to view and comment on a student's notes while they're still working on their paper or project. Under the list of projects that have been shared with you, select notebook. Once you're in the shared notebook space, you can view the student's note cards, note card groups, and their outline. You can also comment on their notes by opening up a live chat box, which you see right here, any comments you leave while the student is offline will be saved for them when they log into their account. You also have the opportunity to view the notes in more detail following the list view. Notebook sharing is a great way for teachers to check in on their students' progress and can help make group projects a little easier for students. The last part of the research is the actual writing or doing of the project. 
students have the opportunity to do that with the paper link. Students can start working on their project, paper, spreadsheet, PowerPoint, using Google Docs. From here, they would have the ability to access it from anywhere and also share it with peers and instructors. Lastly are our admin features. We allow admins to see students' usernames and reset or re-email the passwords to the student. We also offer a progress checker giving admins the opportunity to monitor the progress the student is making with different classes and projects. We also offer statistics, where admins can see cumulative users, citations created, notes created, and projects created, giving you the opportunity to see how research is being done at your school and where EasyBib can fit in. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about School Edition. We do offer trials and one-on-one -on -one demonstrations, so if you're interested in that or have any other questions, please feel free to contact your EasyBib rep. Thanks again.